This tutorial was brought to you thanks to the supporters on the screen. Check out tapjiles.com to find more Dreams resources, donate to support my work, or engage my services to get private instruction or help on a project one on one. So, what are we doing today? I thought I'd teach how to make a way of letting the player change what buttons do what. So this hasn't got the um, the button remapping stuff in yet. This is like demo level sort of thing that we'll put the logic into. So um, we've got a character and we can jump and we can press square to dash. And it does a quick dash. We can go up to here and like time this out and dash all the way to the end without dying. But you need the dash to get through that bit and you need the jump to get through up this bit. So we're going to start off, instead of having these put into there, we're going to use some separate chips kind of in the scene. And depending on how those are positioned, they'll kind of link up to different buttons. So I'll just go over here and make a chip. And I'll just put this on the grid because it makes lining things up a bit easier. So this will be the jump the jump action and that will kind of trigger the jump and we'll send uh, that one so we're going to use uh, wireless transmitters and receivers so that we can talk between this and the character so if I just pin that to the screen go over here so we put a corresponding receiver we make sure it's scene wide so that it doesn't matter where the player is in relation to this chip. It will just work. And then we'll give it a name with of uh, jump. So if we use up and down on the D-pad, then you can go through the different names of the transmitters in the scene. So now that will talk to that. So if we have a a switch that's sending in a signal, and we just play. So if I go, oh, let's just, then we put that into there so that it controls if we're actually jumping or not. So if I go like that, that is a jump. So that part, talking to the puppet is sorted out. Now we'll have another chip that talks to this, and this will have um, a, a controller sensor. And if you go in and into the imp looking tab and click on remote controllable, then this will just work no matter what. You won't have to possess a puppet or something like that. And then I'll use a transmitter here and a corresponding receiver here. So this, I want to have an actual zone so that it only receives signals within this actual zone. So if I put it there and press down on the D-pad to scale it down, We'll give this a name just called trigger, just to represent like a thing that is triggering the action. Uh, and that that position is based on where this chip is. So if I just put a um, signal into it, then as that chip enters that zone, now it's communicating with this receiver. But if it's outside the zone, then it's not communicating with this receiver. So this should look for that specific name. Now we can wire that. So this will be the X one straight into there. And now while I'm pressing X, that's sending a signal, but it's not in, in the jump area. So it's not telling it to jump. But now if I put that there, now it is communicating with it. So if we link that to there, then it's going through the trigger. The trigger saying jump or just do the action. And then the jump is receiving it because it's next to the jump chip. And then that's sending it to the puppet down there. And the puppet is jumping. So now I'm pressing X and it's jumping. And if it's out of the way and I press X, nothing's happening. And that is the basic principle of how we'll set this up. And then I'll be looking at how to let the player actually set it in the game and save it and stuff. But we're going to have um, four of these for the four different face buttons. Instead of having lots of controller sensors, I'll have like a central chip up here. All right. And then the uh, controller sensor will be in there and it will just 
link into these different things. So now this one can be, so this one will be uh, x, and this one will be square, and I'll just hook these two up completely first to make sure uh, that's sorted, and then I'll copy them out and make the other ones. So this one will want square to go through it. So now if this is in the right zone, and if I square, that is jumping, and x isn't doing anything. So this is receiving from the jump chip over there, um, but I'll also have, I'll also send back a signal telling it that it's actually in that zone, so that it knows that it's linked up. So I'll have like a switch saying this mapped, and I'll wire that in. So um, that's always sending a signal through there. Oh no, I'm in the wrong chip. I want to be in that chip over there. So that's receiving from or communicating with the trigger, and we're going to send back to the trigger the fact that it's mapped. Display it somehow. So now when it's in the zone, then it's got this thing. So we can do stuff like um, show a piece of simple UI to show that it's got that letter, that um, button, that sort of thing. And then power that only when it's actually in that zone. And so it's it's showing the UI thing, and then it's mapped, and it's like communicating the thing and everything. So uh, you can use that in any way you want. You can display it in like a menu, or you could uh, display it in the scene, things like that. So we want to be able to tell this to assign itself to jump, to move over into the right spot. So to do that, I'll have a tag. Called trigger position, position, and then we'll move that into the right spot. We'll just um, open this tweak menu to kind of preview the uh, zone. So we're saying that that is a position we're interested in, and that's the trigger position. And then over here, we'll actually make this into a group, which will be helpful later mainly. And, and to be able to visualize where it is, it's also helpful to have this like that. I'll just make it bigger. And then we can group those up and make this assign, um, be applying to the whole group. So now if we put in a teleporter, then the whole group will teleport to wherever we tell it to. So let's just move that to the same position as the chip, like that. And that should target this trigger position. So using up and down the D-pad again. So now for play time, it's hooked itself up. So to tell it which thing to hook up to, we will turn on that tag, and this will be the only tag that's actually on. And then uh, to tell which button to link to that action, We'll turn this on. Oh, the play time. So we turn that on, and then it goes to the right place. And now those two are hooked up. What happens if there's already something there? Because this would kind of they, but both of the buttons would do the same thing, which might be fine. But I'll choose to kind of kick this one out. So to do that, we need to tell anything that's there that it shouldn't be there anymore. So let's have a tag. And we'll just call it remove trigger. And now when that tag is detected by this zone, it means that this zone is in the same position. So that will tell the, the tag that has been detected. Oh, we need to actually tell it which tag. So we set it to the tag mode and give it the same name as the tag we want to detect. And if you play time, now that tag has gone black which means it's outputting this tag output, and we can do something with it. So if this tag is detected, then we will have another teleporter that will move to a neutral position. So we'll have unassigned trigger, 
up there, which means the tag it will be targeting that position up there. So now if we play time, uh, oh, we need to position that correctly. This is kind of the teleporter's um, gizmo position. So it will move the object such that that dot will be on the tags dot. Oh, this needs to target the unassigned trigger name. And then we play, and then it's moved up to there. And that will happen when when it receives the signal to remove itself from the uh, assignment. So you play time, and then that one is working with this jump. And then when we tell this one to move over to there, it will tell that one to kick itself out over to this other position, which is out of the range of this uh, jump action. So now that button won't work for it anymore. But now we've got the problem that this trigger zone will actually find its own tag and tell itself to uh, move out of the way. So we want it to only look for tags that aren't in the same group. That's why we grouped it up so that it will only tell other button triggers to move out of the way. So uh, yeah, if we just turn that on, that moves as normal and that trigger zone doesn't find that tag. So that's fine. Now we'll have a clone of that uh, already there. And I'll just make that a dip, slightly different color. So when this one goes into place, the other one gets kicked out and uh, goes away. So now we have a way of linking any of the face buttons to any of the actions. So we can have other actions called different things and they'd all look the same. Hey, it's Tap Giles here. I've been working hard with the community, helping on forums and answering questions across the internet, and more tutorials are being added to my Patreon all the time for my early access supporters to enjoy and learn from. Most recently I've added videos on many aspects of animating paint and creating precision line work. A simple method of giving the player in-game directions to their next destination, a quick golf putting mechanic that's easy to get started with, and a new way of using a puppet to make a camera rig with an optional GoPro shaky cam feel to it. More advanced topics are being covered as well, such as an implementation of Conway's Game of Life that makes beautiful patterns spider across the screen, an in-world number display in the style of a cash register, word lock puzzle logic inspired by the amazing game Lock, and transform recording, a new method letting you record the position and rotation of any object as it moves in the scene, along with instructions on how to use a new cinematic camera rig built on this technique. These tutorials and much, much more are available now at patreon.com slash tapdials, totaling nine hours of video to learn from. And if you appreciate my help online, this is the perfect way to support me and keep my help coming. Sign up at patreon.com slash tapgiles for just $3 to get 9 hours of video tutorials today. Thanks for your support.